Hi everybody, welcome to chapter 12 for our course. Um, chapter 12 is on developing and maintaining effective websites. Um, if you've been actually watching the videos and following what we do in here, um, you'll notice I spend about 25 to 30 minutes on each video and I'll go into depth, I'll go in depth on a lot of things. I'm really not on this chapter. Um, you're, what you're doing for the sake and scope of this class, you're designing a website on using WordPress um, and you're using blogs that are based off of the WordPress model. You're welcome to use your own website server if you would like, um, but I, I don't really necessarily see the point of you investing a lot of money into something that's for a three credit, 100 level course. Um, I'm going to go through this chapter very rapidly. Um, a lot of the slides I'm going to put up here, I'm going to say this really doesn't matter for us. Um, and that's honestly just because this is something that you have to do that's more business specific than anything else. Um, you design your websites based off of the customers that you hope to obtain and then retain. And then also you're, you're designing your website based off of what the actual model that works for you. So. I don't want to say that I don't value this chapter, but I think it's one of the least important chapters that we cover in this class, if, if that makes sense to you. So I'm going to go through this rather quickly. Um, I'll skip over a lot, um, and I'll direct you to some figures in the book, but this should not be that long and lengthy of a lecture. So we notice that um, we provide just basically note that website design is important. You all know that website design is important. You don't need me to say anything to further extrapolate upon that. Um, the idea that you have to have is you need to make sure that your website is usable and it can be easily measured and that people want to come back to your website. So websites need to be cost effective and they have to have a good marketing strategy. Um, you need to make sure that somebody visits your website and they can get the information they want in a quick and effective manner. So what should websites do? Websites really exist more than anything else to, um, to, to increase your sales revenue. You want people to come on, uh, you want people to come and, and view your website. Um, it allows you to establish a brand. It's advertising, then just going to your website should be advertising. Um, it should help you grow customers, build an online community, and hopefully find a way to provide cost savings as well. Um, we're seeing that we have the growth of people in, in the United States and globally that prefer internet shopping. And the people that prefer internet shopping are more likely to purchase more frequently and they're also more likely to make larger purchases as well. So if you are a product oriented business and you can market to people for internet shopping, that's certainly something that can, that can help you grow. So the website development process is available on page 321, and I think there are good ideas on this. Everything that's involved in this, it doesn't matter what your business is, you're gonna follow these seven steps as you're looking at it. So I would argue this is one of the bigger ideas from this chapter. So we noted this in the beginning, different objectives vary by firm. Um, you're gonna have different models based off of the business and the industry that you're, uh, that you're in. So it's important that you understand what the objectives are for your site. And this is the step one in designing and developing a good website. Um, you wanna try to make sure that you know what your target market is, what the goal of the website is. Is the website's goal to increase your brand loyalty? Is it for people to come and visit your site and then go to a brick and mortar store? Um, or is it for them to basically purchase online? So you need to understand and develop what your site, what your site objectives are going into it. So we show you a different model. This is sort of how you can develop objectives based on the customer life cycle. You're certainly welcome to explore this on your own as well. So clearly, um, both business goals and target audience should drive website design. Um, you're, using, you're using both um, in, order to, um, in order to increase your business, increase your, your visibility. So, Office Depot, um, just a note on what they do um, as a case study, one of the things that Office Depot does, they let you pick whether or not you are a personal you know, personal person using it 
um, if you're a home business, if you're a small, medium, larger industry, and then they give you a different web page based off of your business segment. Um, and they're trying to basically customize and target you so that they're giving you the information you need based off of the size of your business and their customization will help you see how their products and services can help you. So we've already said, you know, we use analytics to kind of target our market and define our, our site content, so nothing more to really expand upon here. So this I, I found to be pretty interesting. Um, if you look at page 326 in your textbook, it's kind of this notion and this understanding of what a heat map looks like. Um, based off of where, where the eye moves around um, in proximity when somebody sees a website. Um, one of the things that I always learned is that the eye kind of moves in a Z pattern. Um, so you're gonna be drawn to what's at the top of the page first, you're gonna move over, and then you're gonna move down. And, and that's kind of how the eye is drawn. So you wanna hit them hard with something in the top of the page, the middle of the page is gonna be important, and in the bottom should be contact information, references, things people are looking for stuff like that, um, and that's basic marketing one on one. So the website design and content frame, this is available on page 327. You can look at this on your own, really nothing um, additional to say related to that. So site navigation, um, the menu options, this is, this is something that a lot of websites really suffer from. Um, when you have menu options, I, I find it more effective on sites if you have a bar across the top with the menu options and a bar on the side with the menu options. And when you go to a different page, those bars kind of stay kind of stay sticky, so people can navigate and find what they need. So you want to try to have menu options more than one place on a site. I, I think that's kind of a no-brainer as well. So. Try to stay above the fold, meaning you want some of your, your most important information up at the top of your page. Um, I would strongly encourage you to do that. Um, having the menu at the top of your page with a dropdown always helps people navigate a lot easier and find what they're looking for. So, in terms of what a usability test would look like, this is on page 333. Um, this is just going over kind of how you can determine whether or not a website is usable using the value, navigation, presentation, and trust model as well. So taking this and applying it to, um, and applying it to other, other sites, they just provide an example of this, so if you want to delve into this, you're certainly welcome to. So the notion of um, deployment and tuning. Um, one of the things that I think is the most important to note is sort of this idea of monitoring site performance. If you have a site that takes a while to load, that can be a massive issue because you're basically paying money for a site that's not loading. Um, one of the issues and challenges that I used to have when I was running my DJ business and our website, um, we relied on a lot of flash video and we found that a lot of people wouldn't download upgrades to Java or for a flash player. Um, they wouldn't be getting the content we wanted them to get. So if you're gonna use video or any plugins, make sure that those plugins are available and monitor how they're effectively impacting you on the site. <clears throat> so we know that the site performance is more technical than it is marketing. Marketing is focusing on business effectiveness and technical is focusing on site performance. So how do you test? Um, in an analytical marketing class, you'll certainly go over this a little more in depth. I would just note that you're gonna do research, run tests, and uh, get customer feedback, and then you'll do that throughout the cycle of your website, and every time you make an update, it's not a bad idea to try this as well. <clears throat> so if the site is not going well, you want to try to improve it and relaunch if you need to. Um, I've talked about Netflix a lot in this class already. But Netflix changes its model. Um, it changed its website model to focus more on streaming because that's where it's making its money right now instead of shipping DVDs and Blu-rays. So different sites, you know, it is the market changes. You have to relaunch and redesign your site to meet the market needs. So an example of uh, what Staples did for redesign, you can certainly read about that in the book on your own. 
Um, I already said this, but notice what it says right here. Avoid flash, avoid videos that load automatically. Um, you want to try to you want to try to do that um, just because some people aren't going to get the plugins or they're not going they're going to click away from your page or it could possibly freeze their computer if they're not on a high powered computer. Um, try to use white font or white background and large fonts because it's going to help for readability. Um, test it on multiple platforms. What looks good on a PC uh, might not look good on a Mac or vice versa. So that's certainly something you want to do as well. So we give you some examples in the book asking if the uh, if the websites are if the websites are well designed. Um, I like the fact that there is a side menu and a in, in, in top menu. I think that's certainly something that helps and makes uh, makes a website uh, easier to see and easier to get the information that you need. So you want the customers to have a good experience on their website, um, and you want them to engage in the content that you're providing as well. So. <clears throat> The San Diego Zoo website. Um, this case study is really discussed more on page uh, more pa more on page 341 uh, in, in, in 342. Um, kind of seeing kind kind of seeing what you know what the experience is and, and what the offer is related to that. Um, you have to you, you have to use it on your own in, in, and look at it and explore whether or not the website would work for you. One of the examples they noted in the book is the San Diego Zoo used to have a print your own admission ticket feature that was available on it, but it was something that was very prone to being hacked and uh, for people to falsify tickets. So that's something that requires additional security costs. So if you do things like that, that's certainly something uh, you need to consider as well. So. Which customer experiences are the most important? Well, I, I think it depends on. Um, I think it depends on what your business is and what your industry is. Um, I think they're all important. The different ones are going to impact different businesses and different industries. So try to remember the marketing objectives. Learn from experiences in any channel. Track your best practices and try to listen to customers continu continually. Um, if you do that. You're, you're remembering why you're designing the website in, in the first place, and the purpose of it really is to provide your customers with a service and to help them uh, get involved in your business and your organization. So this is why I don't go in depth on this chapter, because cost is different um, for no matter what your business or what your industry is. What we're doing in our class is dirt cheap to do. It's essentially free. Um, it's just costing you time. But when you're using software, you're using content, you have to pay licensing fees, you have to pay royalties if you take people's photographs. Um, that's going to cost money. And, and I think that depends on your website and, uh, and what you're designing and what you're developing. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> big ideas, and this is the last thing I'm going to talk about in this chapter. Um, good websites. Look and customize based on the customer. They're easy to navigate, they're easy to use, and they flow properly so that people get the information they need. Um, that's all I really want to say on this chapter, so um, look forward to the last few lectures in this class. Uh, as I said, this was a quick one, so hopefully you got something out of it. Thank you.